All right, so now that our schemas are created, we can begin populating those schemas with tables that will contain records of data. Just like when we created our schemas, we can create tables using Workbench's UI tools, or we can do it with SQL code. Again, this is up to you, totally a matter of preference. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do it with the UI tools, and there'll be another video where we show you how to do it with SQL code. So let's jump into Workbench and walk through it. All right, so the first thing that we'll need to do before we actually create the table, we're gonna specify which schema we want to create that table in. And there's a couple of ways to do that. So one, we can type use and then name the schema. That's the use statement in SQL. So let's say I wanna create a table in my first schema. I'll say use my first schema and I spelled it wrong, so let's make sure that we have that correct, and we'll run that. So now, what's happened here, you'll see in the schemas tab, my first schema has become bold, so that means anything that we do next until we select a different schema is gonna happen within that schema that's been selected. So that's what the use statement does. That's one we'll use over and over again. And so next, let's do the creation of a new table, and like I said, this video is gonna be about doing that using the UI tools. So we're gonna use the create new table in active schema up here. It's the little plus sign with what looks like a table of multiple rows of records. So let's go ahead and click on that. And I'll call it my first table. So this will be the name of the table. And then each table is gonna to need to have some columns. So we'll go in here and we can create um, my first table ID. So I'll call that my first table underscore ID. This is a pretty common syntax that you'll see in a lot of our tables. We'll call that an integer. It has defaulted that column to be the primary key and to be non-null. So what non-null means is any record that will get inserted into this database must contain a value. It can never have a null or empty value. And the primary key denotation here means that this is going to be a field that is used to identify records within this table. And the primary key, we'll get into more details later, tells us that the values in that column can never repeat because they need to distinctly identify a specific record. Uh, that's probably right now the most important thing you need to know about primary key. Generally, all tables will have them in well-designed database schemas. You'll usually have an integer ID value that's auto-incrementing, which means that primary key value goes up by one every time. We'll get into primary keys and foreign keys more later in the course. And here we'll have a created at field and it's defaulted here to a varcar45. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to be a date time. So this is a very simple table. We'll also call this non-null. So every record will need to get a created at timestamp. So this is a very simple table. It doesn't actually really give you any useful information at this point, it's just to be illustrative. But we've got two columns, one is an integer, one is a date time value. And if we go over here and we hit apply, then you'll see the SQL script that will be applied to the database. And you'll see this create table statement where we have the schema name dot table name. And then we have open parentheses. And then we have the column ID, the integer, and a constraint that it is not gonna be null. And then we have a created at, and it's gonna be a date time. Again, it has the constraint that it won't be null. And then we have the primary key noted as my first table ID. And then it closes that out with a semicolon. And if we run this, it should work for us. And so what we have here, we've got SQL script was successfully applied to the database. So now when we go into my first schema and we open up tables, we have a 
database table called my first table. We can actually go in and run a query on that. So we'll do select star from my first table. And because this use statement was run, anything that we run will implicitly be querying off of my first schema. But to be redundant, I'll write my first schema dot my first table. We don't need this first part here. Like I said, that's redundant because we already have the use statement here, but you can always specify which schema that you want to query. And the select from, for anybody who's not familiar, select is your powerhouse statement in SQL, and from is a clause that will always accompany it. It's basically saying select some number of columns from some table. And when we put star in here, the star means select all columns. So let's go ahead and run that. And what we see here is we've got my first table ID and we've got created at, we've got the columns there. And then later in the course, we'll show you how to insert records into those tables. But right now we have a table inside of a schema and the columns exist, but there are no records of data in there yet. Hopefully that all makes sense. You can go ahead and create some tables on your own, explore the different data types, explore the different options that are in there, and we'll get into more of it in a little bit, and we'll, we'll definitely deep dive into the various data types so that you guys are familiar with that. But next up, we're going to do this with SQL code in the next video.